Since my Roth IRA video last year, my portfolio has returned about 29%. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what stocks I have in my Roth IRA portfolio. So be sure to stick around to hear a breakdown of every stock and fund that I'm invested in and what my investment strategy for my Roth IRA is. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adrian. I post videos every Monday on faith and finance. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you stuck around and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. It really does support my channel and it's entirely free for you. In this video, I'm gonna be talking a lot about my investment portfolio, but really the only way I'm able to invest is by managing my money well, which is why I'm really excited that Digit is sponsoring this portion of today's video. Through its AI technology, Digit aims to make money easy, intelligent, and approachable for all. On June 15th of this year, Digit announced its new product, Direct, which is the first comprehensive, intelligent bank account that budgets, saves, and invests for you. Direct is a deposit account powered by MetaBank, which is an FDIC member, but it's not just a normal FDIC insured bank account. It automatically saves money towards your bills or any financial goals that you have so that you know exactly how much money you can spend. The way it works when you open a direct account, you will have three buckets within your account, spending, saving, and bills, and you'll receive a physical Visa debit card in the mail. So you can spend money directly from your direct account. The Visa debit card is issued by MetaBank and can be used anywhere that Visa debit cards are accepted. Right now you can sign up for the waitlist to get early access to Direct and I will drop a link down below for you guys to check it out. With that all said, let's jump into the video. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my entire Roth IRA portfolio. I like to combine the whole idea of faith and finances because I really see that there is like a lack of information out there just about how to manage your money and how I include my faith as a Christian into how I manage my money. I've made several videos more focusing on what the Bible says, really like faith-based investing. This video is going to be more so on just the hardcore meat of investing. And so that being said, I, I obviously don't invest how everybody else invests. I don't even necessarily invest how a financial advisor would tell me to invest, but everyone has different risk levels. So my risk level may be different from your risk level, depending on where you're at in life, how much money you have invested, what your goals are. I would take all of what I say with a grain of salt. Investing is so so personal and really at the end of the day you need to be able to sleep at night with whatever investments that you have so if that's having your investments being much more conservative than mine then don't let somebody else persuade you otherwise if that is where you are comfortable I also share a lot a lot of information when I am sharing my portfolio which I have in several videos so I would really appreciate if you guys subscribed and stuck around I will first start with kind of like a little bit of a history of my Roth IRA so my Roth IRA I opened with fidelity back in 2017 when I was 22 years old, right after I graduated college. And that was when I started working. And actually a lesson that I learned is as soon as I started working, I should have opened up a Roth IRA because I did jobs in college during the summer. I did jobs and I saved all of that money and invested it. However, I didn't know what a Roth IRA was. So I didn't put my money that was earned income into a Roth IRA. I put it in a normal brokerage account. And over the course of however long it is, I have that money invested. I will have a lot Lot more taxes to pay having that money invested within a brokerage account than I would in a Roth IRA. My advice to anybody young would be to open a Roth IRA as soon as you start working. So ever since then in 2017 I've maxed out my Roth IRA which has been anywhere between $5,500 and $6,000. Mostly all of that money has been made through side hustles that I've had. I haven't really let my normal cash flow month to month and annually be affected by the funds that I put into my Roth IRA. And I will also say my my whole portfolio which is about $80,000, includes funds that I rolled over from a Roth 401k into my Roth IRA that I rolled over earlier in 2021. And that gave me more options. I made a whole video on how I rolled that over. If you want to check it out, I will put a link right up here. And I did that mostly because it's best to consolidate where all of your investments are. And I talked a lot more about that in my video when I rolled over my Roth 401k. So if you wanna go check that out, go check that out there. So an overview of my entire portfolio, my Roth IRA, makes up now about 56% of my entire portfolio. I made an entire portfolio video a few weeks ago if you want to go check that out. Within my Roth IRA, 55% is 
VTI. VTI is Vanguard's total stock market index fund. 1Q is a large growth fund. It's a Fidelity ETF that corresponds to the performance of the NASDAQ stock exchange and it pays a pretty nice dividend. So on top of it being a pretty well performing fund, it also pays a nice dividend. FIENX makes up about 3.5% of my Roth IRA. It's a large blend Fidelity international index fund. Really the only international aspect I have within my Roth IRA. I have 14% in FTEC, which is a medium growth ETF that represents the performance of specifically the IT sector in the US equity market. I have 4.6 in Schwab D, which is a large blend fund that tracks the total return of the Dow Jones US dividend 100 index, which are US companies that pay out high dividends. I have 0.1%. I literally bought one share of SHE, which is a large blend spider ETF, which is actually a gender diversity index fund. And it's comprised of gender diverse companies with a relatively high percentage of women among their senior leadership, which I bought actually after I visited New York City and right outside the New York Stock Exchange. They have this girl and it's supposed to represent like female empowerment within business. And then in creating the statue, the SHE ETF was created. And so I'm all for empowering women. So I have 2.3% in Lululemon, which has done very well for me since I purchased it. I have 2.2% in Disney, 1.7% in American Express, 2.3% in Johnson & Johnson, which I actually purchased right when Johnson & Johnson had their issue with their vaccine, with the blood clots and everything. The value of their stock dropped a little bit, so I purchased it when it dipped. And then the rest is 8.6%, which is in cash right now, which is mostly from my 401k rollover and any dividends that I've received. You notice 88% of my Roth IRA is in index funds or ETFs, which leads me into my investment strategy for my Roth IRA. Because it's a retirement account and the goal is long term. I'm much more conservative within my Roth IRA. I really don't do much in terms of buying and selling within my Roth IRA. In fact, I have a good amount of cash from my 401k rollover that I'm still waiting to invest. I will say that from my video last year, I had $30,000 in my Roth IRA to now with my Roth IRA being worth about $83,000. It's not like I invested that much money into my Roth IRA, which it could look like that. Most of it was, yes, I maxed out my Roth IRA last last year and I'm working on it this year, but most of that was rollover from my Roth 401k. I think something that is really important to remember, and I've literally said this in every one of my portfolio videos because I think it's very easy to get caught up in the numbers and how much money you have and get like obsessed with wanting more and more and more. I think something that the Bible is pretty clear on is how much money is fleeting. I'm actually in the middle of reading Ecclesiastes, which if you've been following me for a while, you know that Ecclesiastes is probably one of my favorite books and has been very, very impactful for me in my life. And my church right now is going through the book of Ecclesiastes. So I've been rereading it and I, oh, I love Ecclesiastes so much. Today specifically, I read Ecclesiastes 2 where Solomon is talking about just finding like meaninglessness and everything. It doesn't matter if you're wise. It doesn't matter if you're foolish. All of us are going to end up in the same place. That being said, there is just so much to enjoying life and what God has given you. At the end of the day, like God wants you to enjoy what he has given you, but he doesn't want you to get caught up in the numbers. Numbers. I'm gonna grab my Bible. Ugh. Ecclesiastes 2. A couple of verses that are very impactful for me, specifically Ecclesiastes 2 verse 24. It says, a person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it to, over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the win. I think something that Solomon is continually saying throughout the whole book of Ecclesiastes is chasing after the wind. In the beginning of Ecclesiastes 2, Solomon talks about how he sought to find pleasure in, in every aspect of life that he could. He talks about trying to find pleasure in parties, in projects, in possessions, in people, and in power. And at the end of it, he said, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all of my labor, and yet this was the reward for my toil. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done, and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. I do have a video on investment advice from King Solomon, who was, he was one of the richest humans to ever live, period. You would think he had monetarily everything he wanted, and yet he continually said everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. And so that is just my reminder to myself and hopefully to you guys that at the end of the day, these numbers, not important. This money, 
not important. Like the Lord is going to take care of each and every one of you as a child of God. I thank you guys so much for checking out my video and listening to me talk about money and the Bible. I'm thankful for you guys a lot. If you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love if you stuck around for all of my videos. And I love the community here. I was literally talking to my boyfriend today. I was talking to him about like not loving being on camera sometimes. And he was like, why? do you like making videos? Like, why do you like making a video every week? And I was like, honestly, like I love the community. I love that I can go online and I can talk to people who enjoy talking about the same things I talk about, whether that is faith or finance. I really love just the community that I have. It's very unique. And I know very few people in real life who are so ecstatic about money and investing and are passionate about the topic, but who are also very dedicated followers of Christ. And I know there are people out there and I would love to connect with you if if you want to talk to me, I love messaging people back on Instagram and I would love to have a conversation with you. I try to post every now and then, but I'm not the best at it. So thank you guys for checking out my video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Yeah.